What we buy and the way we buy it is changing. Every day, millions of tonnes of essential goods crisscross the UK, making their way directly to our homes. Hello, who's that? Oh, this, this could be a problem. More and more, we're relying on a hidden army to keep us supplied and alive. Is this the worst part of your job, reversing? Yeah. I'd hate this, trying to back one of these things out. Cool. Right, you lead the way. Now I'm going to join those workers on the front line. 97 mandras left to make done. How many? Put it on the conveyor belt, yeah? No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, you dirty <laughs> From some of the most famous companies in Britain. And I'll be finding out the answers to all your consumer questions. Take photos, collect up evidence and get in touch with the retailers. About our best loved products as I follow their journey from the factory floor. You're going to get hurt. <laughs> Oh, no, I've broke it, look. <laughs> to our front doors. Morning. Morning. Oh, quacky, almost dropped it. That's a very happy customer. As we take a look at this newfound respect for those who provide a lifeline for all of us across Britain. She better be here. There's one product, apart from Lou Roll, that is an absolutely essential part of everyday life. It gets delivered to the supermarket by the gallon and also directly to our front door. You know what I'm talking about. Milk. Today, I'm going to be uncovering the secrets of the milk supply chain. One cogging machine down there not working quite right and everything stops. Stops everything, yeah. Big That's money. not good, is it? Big money. Lifting the lid on how milk stays fresh from cow to cuppa. Oh, no, I've broke it, look. It just come off. <laughs> And finding out why doorstep deliveries are back in fashion. Why don't you go to the supermarket? At 84, I do want to go out to get it. I'm also going to answer some of your utterly essential consumer questions. Oh, come on. I've been waiting for years to get that one in. Oh. It's five o'clock on a wet and windy morning. And I know, I know, I should be getting my beauty sleep, but I can't keep Josie and Poppy waiting. You see, this is stage one of Mission Milk. That's getting the milk out of the cows. And there's a tanker due quite soon, which is going to want filling. So I better crack on. In fact, it's going to arrive in just two hours, and there are 150 cows to milk before that. Morning, ladies. Ah, oh, Don. You OK? Yeah, I'm all right. Dairy farming sisters Josie and Poppy followed in their parents' footsteps and work on the family farm just outside Haverford West in West Wales. As for me, well, I'm here to give them a hand. So we're going to get you changed first. Yep. So if you pop into the door on the right... No full English and a cup of coffee before we get started. No, no, You're straight to work. Way. Charming, charming. You're looking far too clean. I've got a funny feeling that's going to be changing, isn't it? Hang on a minute. A full-length overall, welly boots. I've got a feeling this might be an even dirtier job than I thought. Ta-da! Nice. nice. Look in the park. Yeah? Yeah, look great, yeah. Well, let's go milk some cows, yeah. shall we? And with a milk tanker even closer, we need to get a move on. Do you want to go through that squeeze gap? Yep. Let's do I this. call this a door, you know. Look, this squeeze gap here, Dom. Look. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there is a squeeze gap. You're a beginner. Oh, Don't I feel so <laughs> silly. First job, round up the cows. Come on, ladies. Oi, no lounging around. That's and you. It. Wakey, wakey, oh, no. eggs and bakey. As it's winter, the cows spend less time in the fields and more time in the cosy cattle shed, where they have their own cubicles to sleep in and are fed tasty silage, which is grass that has been stored and preserved through a fermentation process. Up you get. Come on, ladies. Shake a leg. It's milky time. Come on, girls. So that's the easy part done. That was the easy part, yeah? Yeah. Come on, Gert. Come on. So this one's Oi. called Gertie. Come on, Gertie. You... Now the cows are rounded up. So just go down these steps. The milking parlour has to be prepared for their arrival. Ready? Of course I'm ready, yeah. Right, do you want to start by just going down and picking up these like this? Yeah, so all release the them down. all up, yeah? Yeah, so if they're down, just that's it. Now, these might look like a creature from a monster movie, but they're actually the business end of just about every modern mechanical milking system. OK. 
They're eager, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they are. So do you want to let her in? Is that button there? Is oh, that, yeah. Yeah. If you press that. Yeah, okay. good one. Well done. Here they come. I have to confess, I'm a bit nervous. We obviously start that end, do we? Yes, yeah, so we always start that end, and then we work our way back then. Right. And then we start milking them. Wait, wait your turn. When it's milking time, it's milking time, they just want to be milked. And they do get fed in here as well. They absolutely love it. Each of these dairy cows can produce around 6,500 litres of milk a year. <laughs> right then, time for my milking lesson. So you just walk up to a cow, you let her know you're there by just touching her either like that. Yep. And then you just want to feel each cheek. Yep. You strip a bit of milk just to get her stimulated and make sure her milk is all OK. And then she's ready for right. the unit. So you just pull it across like that. The vacuum starts automatically. And you just hold it here, put one here, unit here. And it's as simple as that. Is it really? <laughs> These are clever machines. A sensor in the suckers, which are actually called a cluster, by the way, detects when the milk stops, and then this wire pulls it away from the udders. It's very clever. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It makes our lives easier, safer. Yep. It's good for the cows as well. Now, I've noticed a cow that has red tape on her back legs. Josie and Poppy do this to identify that she has been given antibiotics. Just like humans, sometimes cows get an infection. But strict rules mean no milk can leave the farm with antibiotics in it. Josie and Poppy collect milk from this cow separately so that it doesn't contaminate the milk from the other cows. We're basically their staff, so we do everything for them. Oh, like fed right. them, clean them, feed them. Yep. Sounds lovely. Any chance you looking after me? But in return, we get good quality milk. We've been drinking milk for millennia. And today it's popular stuff, with 99% of the population buying milk regularly. And we put enough away of the white stuff to fill more than 2,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools every year. Although only about 3% of that is still delivered by traditional milkmen or women, it's on the increase. I'm about to try something for the first time in my life. Milking a cow. Poppy makes it look very simple. Surely even I can't get this wrong. Right, so up, it, stroke her udder. A little rub first. That's it. Right, squeeze out some milk. Oh, Dom, you're putting it on upside down, so that bit always oh. has to be, yeah, like that. That's aggressive, Dom. There's no need to get into yeah. a fight with it. This thing's got a life of its own, never mind the actual cow. Hold the unit there. Yeah. And now use your left hand to put it on. That's it. Uh, there we yeah. go. That's one. That's it. Uh, well, well done. You've got it now. We'll be here a while if he knocks them all. <laughs> Oi, let her the cheek. These are beautiful animals, but they don't off smell bad. Oh, no. Oh. I think that's payback. She's got a dumb one on me back. I've never been pooed on in a parlour. I've heard dom means manure in Welsh, but this is ridiculous. I've done some different jobs in my life, but no-one's ever done Do that you to wanna me. Do you want to wipe your ear with that? Is it in the ear as well? Yeah, well, it's, it's on the back ear. of your ear. After even more shenanigans from this lot... You're going to get hit. <laughs> we've finished milking all 150 of Josie and Poppy's cows. I'm actually quite surprised that in just 90 minutes, they've produced nearly 1,300 litres of milk. Now it's all over, though. My mind wanders to thoughts of a cuppa. Milking before or after? Before. Before. Yes! Always. <laughs> Same before. here. Later on, we'll find out how to make the perfect brew. But for now, here's everything you need to know about the white stuff. Like what milk is the healthiest? I've asked nutritionist Priya Chu to tell us what's what. First of all, is milk good for us? We know that milk is really nutrient dense and it's important for us to be consuming it as part of our diet. Calcium is the obvious nutrient that is in there. Calcium is important in terms of our teeth and our bones, also our muscle function and for blood clotting within the body. Can we get those nutrients without drinking milk? Other foods you could choose to eat would include yoghurt and cheese, 
beans and nuts, including white beans and edamame beans, chia seeds and sesame seeds. Tofu is also a good source and green leafy vegetables too. Is full fat milk fattening? If we look at full fat milk here, it contains 3.7% fat. That's not a high fat product. If you're just having a bit in your tea and having some with your cereal, then that's totally fine to be choosing full fat if that's the one that you like. If we compare full fat to something like skimmed milk, this is only 0.1% fat. So a huge difference, but also a big difference in terms of taste as well. It could also be that by sticking to a milk that has a higher fat content means that you feel more satisfied with the food that you are having and it stops you from reaching for that extra biscuit later. What about our cholesterol? If you're worried about your cholesterol levels, then saturated fat is one of those nutrients to be looking out for. So unless you're having huge amounts of milk in your diet, then you don't need to worry about switching milks for your heart health. Other foods such as your cakes, pies, pastries, biscuits and crisps are more likely to be contributing to the saturated fat in your diet. Can you freeze milk? It's totally fine to freeze all types of milk. In fact, it can be a great way of storing small portions of milk in your freezer. Do be aware that when you freeze plant-based milks, they can tend to separate, so give them a good shake up before you use them. How does powdered milk compare? There is a small nutritional difference between powdered milk and fresh milk in terms of its vitamin content. However, powdered milk can be a great thing to have in your cupboard as a standby. So Priya, the big question, milk in first or last in tea? My favourite way to make a cup of tea is using loose leaf tea leaves. Tea in first, then milk in last. Go on Priya, give me a milk top tip. One top tip would be, if you were thinking about making a substitute for cream in a recipe, you could choose gold top milk. The gold top is 5% fat, which makes it really creamy, great for something like a risotto or a rice pudding. Back on the farm in West Wales, we've got minutes before the tanker arrives. After leaving the cows, Josie and Poppy's milk has been chilled and piped into a large stainless steel reservoir. This is our tank, it holds 8,000 litres yep. all together. Usually we'll have, around this time of year, about five to 6,000 litres in there at a time. Wow, that's enough milk for about a million cups of tea. That tank should be here soon, yeah? Yeah, you better get changed and get some poo off you. <laughs> you <laughs> smell, Dom. You don't want to be around the tank of smelling like charming, that. Charming, <laughs> charming. God. I've only just had time for a wash and brush up. I feel a bit cleaner right now. When Tony the Tanker Man arrives. Hello, Tony Dominic. Lovely to meet you. And you're here to collect the milk, yeah? Yes, I am. As well as delivering the milk from the local farms to the processing dairy, Tony has to take a sample of each farm's milk, which we tested back at base, in particular for the dreaded antibiotics. It's up to us to know. Um, if we let this go, that's when it can become a problem. If it got all the way to the dairy, then they found out there's antibiotics in here. This tanker contains the milk from all the local farms. But if one of the samples tests positive for antibiotics, the whole tanker load of milk would have to be destroyed. If that wasn't bad enough, the farmer would have to pay for the lot. Josie and Poppy run the risk of a bill for up to £4,500. You have to be careful then, don't you? Yeah, you have to, you yeah. Have to be really careful. Wow, okay. All will be revealed when the milk is tested at the processing dairy later on. It takes just five minutes for Tony to suck the 5,000 litres of milk from the reservoir into the tanker. Did you spill a bit of milk then, Tony? Yeah. Don't you cry over that? No. Well, that fell flat. Back to the tanker. It's like a giant thermos flask and keeps the milk cool. It's double skinned. Yeah. If the milk was in at three degrees, the milk would come out at three degrees. Regardless of what the outside temperature is. Yeah. yeah. Tony can't hang about, and I need to hit the road too. Right, ladies, my time's over with you. I've loved it. No, oh, thank, thank you. you. You've loved having you. I've left the dry cleaning in there, all right? Yeah. Ta da. Bye. Ta -da. Bye. 
Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to jump in the milk truck with Tony, so we're going to follow on close behind in hot pursuit. Right, Tony, don't spare the horses. It's just seven and a half miles from the farm to the processing dairy in Haverford West. Just enough time to give Tony a tinkle. Hello. Tony, it's Dominic. We're nearly back at the factory now. I've got about a mile and a half to go again. OK, so this is just a short run. Tony makes two round trips a day to collect all the milk from his local patch. When it's full up, does the vehicle handle differently? Oh, yes, totally. You've got to be uh, very careful. When she's half full, she's at the most dangerous point. Now, Tony strikes me as a milking first type of guy. You'll never believe this, Don, but I don't drink milk and tea. You don't take milk and tea? No. <laughs> We're here, aren't we? We're nearly back at the yard now. Right, OK. But the tanker, containing up to 18,000 litres of milk, isn't allowed to be unloaded just yet. The milk samples from the farms have to pass a strict inspection first. For you? I'm going to test it to see if it's compliant. And in charge of that process is this lady called Maria. After tests to check the quality of the milk, which are passed with flying colours, it's the moment of truth for Josie and Poppy. Antibiotic test is the most important one. Yeah. The consequences of a failed antibiotic test are the highest. Antibiotics could actually make people ill. That explains why Josie and Poppy will get such a big bill if their milk fails the test. Maria takes a drop of the sample and dips a test strip into the milk. It's like a pregnancy test, basically. Basically, yes, like a pregnancy test. Yeah. Maria says yay or nay. Yes. It feels like we've been waiting forever, but finally, the result of the test for antibiotics is ready. Will Josie and Poppy pass, or will they get a bill for four and a half grand? If you look at the strip, yep. the bottom line is definitely darker than the top one. Definitely. That means the milk is a pass. Crikey, that's a relief. Well done, Josie and Poppy. Good girls. Right, so we can get the milk unloaded, Yes, yeah? the milk can be offloaded. OK, let's go. All good, yeah? The boss said it's all OK, yeah? Good, nice, sweet. Perfect, so what happens? Thomas here connects the pipes ready to offload the milk. And I lend a hand with the biggest spanner I've ever seen. How tight do you want it? A bit more. More? Yes. Three tight? Yes. So we have to press pump one, please. Just stop it. That one? Yeah. Fill tank free. <laughs> OK. Four hours after leaving the cow's udder, the second stage of mission milk is over. But Josie and Poppy's milk is nowhere near ready for delivery yet. The next step of the process happens in this industrial-looking building. And while I'm off to find someone to show me around, let's take a trip down memory lane. At 92, Derek Arch is the oldest milkman in Britain. I didn't realise I looked so dopey. Delivering the pints to doorsteps in and around Coventry in the West Midlands has been part of his life since he was just 14 years old. I wanted to be a carpenter. I wouldn't have been any good, but... You haven't regretted it, have you? No, it's been good to me. Although he now has help from his son, Stuart, Derek has been heading out every morning for the past 78 years. And delivering milk has been the way of life for Derek and Stuart for generations. It's in the blood, it must be. My grandfather, my father, me, and him, he's the fourth generation. We've always got on pretty well together. And we have an occasional dispute, like most families. Delivering milk has been part of Britain's history since the end of the 19th century. In fact, Derek's grandfather started his rounds in 1884. Yeah, when you dad, when you first started, it was pony and trap, wasn't That's it? That's it. You yeah. had Dolly the pony. Dolly, Dolly the horse. And at the end of the round, you had to tie her to a post because if she knew she was nearly home, she knew the last call. And if you didn't tie her, she bolted off back home around the field where, where we grazed her. 
In fact, the horse and cart was a regular fixture on delivery rounds in the UK until the 1950s when they were replaced with other means of transport. I used to fetch it from the farm on a motorbike and box sidecar. That was it. I was hooked. For Derek and Stuart, being milkman has always been about being part of the community. We see people that, that never see anybody else. You know, elderly people that have got no relatives or anything. We're the only people that see them in the week. A lot of them, isn't there, really? We post their letters we're, for we're, them, you know. Yes, I've uh, fetched the police out because uh, the milk hadn't been purchased in and found the old deer in the hall. You know, fell over and couldn't get up. Like one or two occasions like that. Yes, it's rarely boring being a milkman, and today's no exception. Red! Come here. Red! 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 Oh, snack, you stupid boy. Come on. Come here. He's a good boy. Come on. Ah, uh -uh. no. Oh dear, I don't think Reg wants to play ball. Well, if you want something doing properly, leave it to dear old Dad. Here. Yeah. Come on, how do you do? There we are, here's your dog back. After a couple more stops, the morning milk round draws to a close. As for the oldest milkman in Britain... 92. Hey. Yeah, well, I've got a long, long way to go, haven't I? You yeah. have. I've got 30 years. I think he's ready for his cuppa. Right, come on, get me home, I've gone cold. Back at the processing dairy in Haverford West, I'm about to start stage three of Mission Milk. This is where Josie and Poppy's milk is bottled ready for delivery. But you won't be surprised to learn there's a lot more to it than that. I'm meeting factory manager John, who's going to give me the lowdown. Morning. I've been told to report here today. You're going to show me the ropes, are you? I'll give you a run around. What we're doing is turning raw milk from the farms into milk which will have the keeping quality and it's safe for the end user. The incoming milk is heated to 60 degrees. That's the ideal temperature for separation. It then comes over to this machine, which is a separator, which is just a giant centrifuge. This device is a bit like a washing machine, spinning Josie and Poppy's milk to remove the cream. And then, well, it's poured straight back in again. Or at least part of it is. It's actually this process that gives semi-skimmed, skimmed and whole milk. Right, why on earth would you take all the cream out and then add it back? Why not just take a little bit out and then you've got semi-skimmed? Because the fat content of the milk varies from silo to silo and day to day. So by taking it all out, you're always working from the same position. It's more accurate doing it that way, basically, yes. yeah? Yep. Next, it goes into the homogenizer. In the same way you chop onions in a food blender, the homogenizer breaks up the fat globules. Well, it makes it very, very small particles and it becomes suspended throughout the milk. So the fat's still there, but it doesn't rise to the top. And that's because consumer tastes have changed. It's strange, it used to be everyone wanted the cream on the top of the bottle. Well, the blue tits did. Yep. You remember those days, don't you? Oh, I remember the glass bottles, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Next, Josie and Poppy's milk is pasteurised. The temperature is raised to 72 degrees to kill bacteria. After pasteurisation, the milk is cooled and is ready to be put into containers. Well, your next step is to go and see Andrew. Yep. Uh, he's up on another level uh, and he is debagging the bottles ready to start the production line. So that's your place to go next. Smash it. All right. Thanks, John. It'll be nice yeah. to you. I've been told to grab a big bag of bottles to get this process started. This one should do it. Morning. morning. Are you Dom. Andrew? Morning, Dom. I am. What's going on here then? I'm putting bottles on for the milk filler downstairs. Yep. And per day, how many are you actually loading up on here? Anything up to about 20,000. Every day? Yeah, yeah. You must be knackered. Yeah, fairly tired at the end of the day, yeah. These bottles are the first part of a non-stop production line producing up to 100,000 litres of milk a day. If there's a problem here, everything grinds to a halt and I won't be able to deliver Josie and Poppy's milk. No 
normally the problem is when it gets that end, if there's a bottle the wrong way round. If it's that way, yeah. it will definitely jam the system up. Ah, OK. It would make a mess, yeah. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Can I have a go at one on my own? Yes, yeah, certainly, yes. I'll do my best not to muck it all up. This is the cut end, Dom. Yeah. And the cut end always goes into the table first. OK. Now, I've got to put that machine down, yeah? Push the bar down. Yeah, I've messed that up already, haven't I? No, no, Oh, no, no. I've broke it, look. No, I just, it just come off. I'm going to break the machine first time. OK, in and down. In, down, yeah? There you got it. Would you like to cut it? Ah, right up. Well, have I just killed a load of bottles? You might, you might have, yeah. I need to concentrate. If I muck this up, I'll cause a stoppage on the production line. One you second. didn't tell me that, mate, did you? You didn't tell me. No, we're OK. You sure? Yeah. OK. Yeah, you can take, take the bag off, Dom. Uh, Please. Right. You ready? Yeah, go for it. A bit like taking the cover off a quilt, isn't it? It is, yeah. In and up, yeah? Yes, please. You need to check the hopper to make sure there's enough tops for the bottles downstairs. Oh, right. OK, how do we do that? Uh, round the side there, through, yep. that, through that hatch. This thing here, yeah? Yeah. If it's almost completely empty, normally I put in about 2,000. Can I do that? Yes, one bag will be fine. The bottle tops get sent down a chute where a flipper turns them over, ready to be screwed onto the filled milk bottles. And that happens downstairs. Thanks, Andrew. OK, no problem Cheers, at all. Buddy. Pleasure to meet you. So I'm off there to see what's next for Josie and Poppy's milk after it's processed. Hiya. Oh, don't you all right? It's very noisy, isn't it? It's very noisy, yeah. Dave manages the part of the production line where processed milk will be put into the bottles. So I was just upstairs. Yeah. Is that where the bottles are coming down? Well, that's where your bottles are coming down. Then what? Well, they come all the way down and round into the filler. Pushes up and the milk is released, as you can see. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is the hopper that you were upstairs with the caps coming down. They then go into a, a rotary disc. Yep. And then they get shoved onto the top of the bottle and screwed on nice and tight. Can the cap ever come in inverted? Sometimes, but not very often. Then you've got a bottle full of milk with no yeah. cap on it. So what do you do about that? The operator will then put a manual cap on. It's a very funny balance machine, isn't it? If something doesn't quite work, it can cause a catastrophe in this whole line, can't it? It could. And would you get it? I must have tempted fate, because just then the production line grinds to a halt. Yeah, we've got a problem with the case sealer. So we put six bottles into a pack, yep. and it goes through a heat tunnel and gets shrink wrapped. There's an engineer working on that at the moment. So one cogging machine down there not working quite right, everything stops? Stops everything, yeah, all Ooh. the way back. OK, yeah. you obviously don't like that happening. We don't, no. Big That's money. not good, is it? Big money, no. Thankfully, the problem isn't too serious and the production line starts up again after about half an hour. But I want a closer look at that shrink wrapping process. What's he doing? Bottle had come round twisted. Ah! So it's coming in wet ways. Yep. So here, but it sometimes gets stuck and it sometimes twists like that. So even though this is all so automated, you still need a human element to keep an eye on it and put it right when it goes wrong, yeah? Yeah, we have a couple of machine minders throughout the line, yeah. Mihail is one of those minders. He looks out for milk bottles that are the wrong way round going into the shrink wrapper. The six bottles get wrapped in plastic before passing through a tunnel with very hot air blown on them. This shrinks the wrapper and holds them firmly in place. Let's have a little look. Might still well, be a yeah, bit warm. Yeah, it's quite warm, isn't it? But it cools off very, very quickly. And that will go solid and allow us to pick them up. Gotcha. And then we'll go through to the palletizer there. Come on. A palletizer? That's a new one on me. Turns out it's another machine that stacks bottles up to six levels high on a wooden pallet. And this is all caged off for people's security because you don't want someone yeah. falling into that machine, do you? If you open the cage, it cuts all electric out to the right. machine. The machine can automatically detect when it's full. Yep. Once it's full, it releases it, and then what it'll do now, it will go through the wrapping machine. The machine will attach itself and start going round, as you can see. That machine reminds me of a fairground ride. When well, that's finished, rollers will take it to the end, forklift truck will come and take it off, put it directly into the fridge. And how long will it stay in the fridge for? That'll go out tomorrow. Might even go out this afternoon. So it's never more than a day in the fridge? Never. Welsh cows, by the way. 
Welsh cow. <laughs> Probably from Germany or uh, Guernsey or somewhere yeah. like that. Well, now we're all Welsh. Yeah, behave yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I know what Dave means. The cows that supply the milk all live in Wales. I've been on my feet for ages, and with all this talk of milk, I think it's time for a cuppa. But the burning question still is, should the milk go in before or after the water? Now, I know what I think, but I've been given a few tips to make your tea taste better. Always use freshly drawn water. Don't reboil the kettle endlessly as the water loses oxygen, which is needed to bring the flavour out of the tea. Try to use filtered water if you live in a hard water area, because lime scale can leave a layer of scum on your tea and also clogs up your kettle. If you're using a teapot, don't forget to warm the pot before putting the tea in. Using loose tea leaves will give you a better quality taste. Tea leaves are 100% natural, unprocessed and therefore have more health benefits. Tea bags came about in the early 1900s. They're clearly much more practical, but generally they contain lower grade tea leaves that have been crushed into dust. For black tea, pour the boiling water on the tea leaves or tea bag to release the flavour. But for other teas, like green tea, you'll want to let the water cool for a bit as boiling water will burn the tea. Make sure you use a tea strainer if you're using loose leaf tea. Let the tea brew for approximately three minutes. Loose leaf tea takes longer to brew than tea bags. Now for the all important bit, the milk. Apparently, the idea of putting your milk in first comes from when we all drank from china teacups. The bone china was delicate and could crack if very hot water was poured straight in. So people would put the milk into the cup first and then pour the tea from the teapot. Of course, now we don't use china teacups as much, that's not necessary. So if you're using loose leaf tea from a teapot, it's up to you whether you put the milk in first or last. However, I'm told if you put the milk into the mug with your tea bag before putting the hot water in, the milk can clog the tea bag and boiling water won't get in so easy to release the tea. So as I usually use a tea bag and a mug, I should be putting my milk in last. Yeah, whatever. Back at the processing dairy in Haverford West, most of the milk from the farm has been processed and bottled, but some of the incoming milk is sent to be made into butter. And I'm off to have a go at making some. You all right, Aaron? Dom, how are you? Good, thanks, mate. Well, what's going on here? Aaron's job is to oversee the butter making for the dairy. Apparently, the process is so simple, you could do it at home. And Aaron's going to show me how. The basic ingredient of butter is cream, because it contains the most fat. This is just regular sort of single cream, yep. This is uh, whipping cream, this is, so okay. very high fat content in it. That should do it. What I have to do then is lid on and shake. Yeah? For how long? Well, it depends how vigorously you shake it. Sometimes it can be 10 minutes, sometimes it can be half hour. I'll race you to it. You're on. <laughs> Prepare to lose, Aaron. I do remember doing this when I was a young kid. Yeah. Very young, yeah, with my parents. <laughs> When you keep shaking it, you'll see it go really thick. Now it's gone solid, are we meant to stop? No, keep going. All right, OK. That's the butter water coming out of it. Shall I do the same? I don't know if it, it depends on how you're shaking it. So that's the buttermilk, you'll be left with the butter. OK. Right, come on in. How are we going to turn this properly into butter now, eh? Right, so if we uh, cut your bottle open. Yep. If I can. So you can see it's solidified in it. Look at that. We're almost there with some butter. Okay. So if you just want to drop it on there, yeah? Yeah. The whole lot? Yeah, the whole lot. That's fine. And what we want to do is actually drain the rest. Let's just drain all that. Is that actually butter now? That is pretty much butter. So butter is basically cream with that the milk residue removed from it, yeah. And that's it. Can I um, just feel the consistency in it? I'm quite impressed, actually. It's, <laughs> it's very easy to make. People don't realise how easy it is to do. You literally could spread that on your toast. Yeah, I'd put it in the fridge for a little bit. So how much of that will you be able to produce per day here? So on a daily basis, we're, we're looking at about seven tonnes of butter. Wow. 
Yeah. That's a lot of butter, isn't it? It's a lot of butter. Yeah. The, the, the and it's about as fresh as it gets, isn't it? It is, yeah. Up to half of Josie and Poppy's milk could be made into butter. As for the other half... And here it is, the finished product. Now, we're going to follow one of these bottles to a doorstep in Swansea. But first, we've got to get this lot over to a local delivery depot. Can we start loading this, Maria? Not yet. I still have the last thing to do. I have to check that bottle. As we saw earlier with the antibiotics test, no milk gets past Maria if it's not up to scratch. Let's hope our milk passes the inspection. The labels are all right. Yep. I shall open one. Smells all right and it's not leaking. Yeah. So I would say the palate is good to go. Superb. Maria's giving it the thumbs up. Yes. Right, thanks, Maria. I'll go get the uh, driver loading up. Cheers, him. Our pallet of milk joins the others already loaded in the back of the articulated truck. Time for another lorry journey, this time to Swansea, which should be about an hour. Traffic depending. You right, Tom? All good to go. I'll see you in Swansea. I'll give you a call. Tell her, mate. Tom does the journey to the delivery depot in Swansea twice a day carrying 26 pallets of milk at a time. Hello. Hello, Tom. It's Dom. Do you go direct to Swansea, or do you stop off and have a little cuppa and a bacon sarnie somewhere? You shouldn't be telling you on that, though, Rob. <laughs> what, what do you do? I, know, I normally try and get straight through, because these boys up in Swansea, they need the milk ASAP as well, because they've got customers waiting. Do you like that job? I love it. Yeah, I really do. Why? I really do. Why do you love it? You feel like your own boss, you know? Like, once you leave the yard, you, you're not really bothered by the office. Now, what will Tom's answer be to that all-important question? Do you put your milk in your tea before or after the water? If I make a tea, it goes in right at the end. Ah, OK. You're an after. I've been told all my life, to be honest, that I've been doing it wrong, but I don't know. It tastes good to me. Well, you're not wrong, Tom. Milk in after for a couple with a tea bag is the way to go, apparently. Anyway, enough chit-chat as we're just pulling into the delivery depot, completing the 56-mile journey from the processing dairy in Haverford West. Well, the milk's arrived at its penultimate stop and it's currently being unloaded. I think I'm going to find a manager. Have a little chin wag. Hello, mate. Are you the governor? I am indeed, yeah. Give me an idea. How much milk would you have in here on a busy day? On a busy day, we can take a, a full arctic of milk, so that's 26 pallets of milk there. That's more than 40,000 pints of milk at a time in this depot. But it won't be here for long before it's sent out to shops and customers' doorsteps. And I'll be helping out with that part tomorrow morning. Right, well, look, it's freezing in here. I'm up at the crack of dawn because I'm actually going to be delivering some of this milk. Nice meeting you, Dean. And you, mate. Keep up the good work, bud. Cheers, Dom. Take care. Ta-da, bud. So as the sun goes down, it's time for me to disappear to my bed. It's 5am again, and this is it, the last leg of Mission Milk, when I get to deliver Josie and Poppy's milk to the residents of Swansea. First job, try not to wake everyone up. Which is hard when you're as loud as me. Morning, Dom. And I survived yourself? What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in the van behind. I'll give you a hand when we get to the houses, yeah? Yeah, no problem. All right. Yep. Cheers, Andy. I'll follow behind. Shut up. Now, I've met a few delivery drivers in my time, but I'm told I'm in for a surprise with Andy. Apparently, he's something of a speed freak. He runs everywhere. So quick on his feet, I can barely keep up. Have you got any work for me? He's already done the delivery. Not at the minute, no. I'll tell you, honestly, give me a, give me a chance. I want to do some milk deliveries. Right. Okay. right. Right, this time I'm going to catch him. I bet he's finished. He's like Roadrunner. I'm not going to get a look in here. You make me laugh, Andy. You're the fastest milkman I've ever known in my life. I oh, got it's faster than me. Is it? Oh, yeah. I'm glad I'm me. not following them. Yeah, yeah. What time do you start? I left the depot at uh, 20 to 11. 
really. So yeah. give or take, you know, you're doing nearly an eight-hour shift. Oh, yeah, yeah. Throughout the night. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but that's bitter in the winter. Yeah. I mean, it's not exactly lovely now, is it? No, no. No wonder he runs everywhere, then. It's to keep from freezing. This is the worst area, this is. It's yeah. all open. Look, the only other people up the same as us are the old bin men, right, guys? Yeah. They start like they probably got a warmer cab as well. As we move into the town, finally I catch Andy before he does all the work again. You won't be surprised to hear that delivered milk is more expensive than the white stuff you buy in a supermarket. So I'm keen to find out why people do it. Someone's coming. Morning. Morning. What's your name? Val. Hello, Val. I didn't get you out of bed, did I? No, no, I've been up for an hour. Why do you order your milk to be delivered? Why don't you go to the supermarket? I've always had my milk delivered for 40 years. At 84, I don't want to go out to get it. Good for you. Val, you wouldn't believe what I've been through to get that milk to you. What about if I told you one of the cows did a great big whoopsie on me. Oh, well, I would believe that. Do you know the milkman personally? Yes. Andrew? Andrew. What about a cup of tea and a biscuit? Does he ever get one? No, because he comes too early for that. Yeah. He's here early in the morning. He's see? up with the sparrows, isn't he, him? All right, Val, it's been lovely talking to you. OK. Bye-bye, love. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. I think you've got a fan there, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovely one. Lovely lady. Oh, great. Now it's started to rain. I'll tell you what, when it's like this, who in their right mind would want to be a milkman? That's house number... That one here, yeah? Andy, you know the price of milk is actually quite cheap, isn't it, compared to what goes into it? Yes. Have you ever actually thought about how much effort it does take to get the milk into that bottle onto people's doorsteps? Yes. Andy, you're doing a cracking job, mate. Thank Cheers. You very much. I never realised there was so much involved in getting a daily pint of that white stuff. It's clear I wouldn't be able to enjoy my brew without the help of so many people. You're putting that on upside down. From Josie and Poppy getting up in the wee hours every morning to tend to their cows. We'll be here a while if he knocks them all. <laughs> to tanker driver Tony, milk monitor Maria and all the guys at the processing dairy. Would you like to cut it? Ah. Righto. Well, have I just killed a load of bottles? You might, you might have, yeah. Making the milk ready to drink. All the way down, around it to the filler. Pushes up, and the milk is released, as you can see. To athletic Andy jogging through his milk round. You make me laugh, Andy. You're the fastest milkman I've ever known in my life. Oh, I got it's faster than me. Is it? Oh, yeah. Cool, glad I'm not following them. To deliver to the people of Swansea. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it, you know. I don't know what I'd do without my daily cup of tea. Oh.